Esports, or video gaming to most of us, took a big step closer to becoming a recognised sport today. Competitions which can attract crowds of thousands of people now have a single world governing body to regulate them. Sky's Tom Cheshire reports. Inside an industrial unit in Leicester, the future of sports is maybe taking shape. These professional video gamers are doing battle in a qualifying round for a tournament in London this weekend. But what's known as eSports took a big step forward today, with the announcement of a governing body called the World eSports Association. Its aim is basically to act like a less corrupt FIFA, to regulate and professionalise a fragmented and often buccaneering sport. The fundamental success of this sport going forward is going to be determined by having a cohesive set of policies that are reliable and predictable for players, for fans, for teams, for publishers of video games. <laughs> It's as easy as it is foolish to scoff at esports. Professional video gaming is more popular and more lucrative than many more established sports. Tournaments like these are drawing tens of thousands of spectators, while athletes compete for prize pools totaling millions of pounds. Online, the audiences are growing to tens of millions of live viewers, and Twitch, a video site which streams esports matches, was bought by Amazon in 2014 for $970 million, around £670 million. There are a number of tournaments worldwide, a mind-boggling number in fact. The most lucrative though are run by the people who make video games, the video games publishers. This new body governing the sport will want to regularise things to come up with a calendar and also protect players. That means publishers giving up a bit of their power, they might not want to do that. Esports may be booming, but there is a battle on for the future of the sport. Still, this is proof of how far esports have already come. When I was a player, it was kind of a, a main uh, challenge was the kind of social acceptance, convincing your family or partner to, to spend endless hours practicing and traveling around the world. But obviously also a, a general immaturity of the, of the community and the sport itself uh, when it comes to cheating, doping aspects, um, fair play. Some of those problems still persist. If you wanted evidence that esports really is a proper sport, it still has issues with gambling, match fixing and even doping. Professional players have admitted to taking amphetamines to improve their reaction times. This new governing body will have to eliminate those issues to achieve its prize of legitimising esports. Tom Cheshire, Sky News. Let's get more now on this story with Guy Cocker, the video game expert and reviewer. So, Mr Cocker, in your opinion, can e-gaming ever really be a sport? Well, it's, it's very interesting for someone that hasn't ever attended one of these events and just looks at a load of kids kind of playing video games on screen. At the moment, it's as if the FIFA, if you want to take a comparison football, had a load of separate leagues just operating on their own somewhere and just loads of people getting involved in different events. It's very confusing for someone to, to get into. Uh, this move just helps it legitimise itself a little bit. And as it said in the, uh, in the VT there, allow uh, doping, which has been a huge issue in the sport, um, to be a, a little bit more regulated. Um, and it just allows it to reach a bigger audience. At the moment, it's, it's for, as I said, for anyone that's not interested in, in esports, they might think it's a small underground thing. But the competitions that are being held, uh, to give you an example, the uh, Wimbledon final uh, last year had about 9 million uh, viewers for its final. For the final of one of the big um, esports games, League of Legends, that had 11 million concurrent uh, viewers online. So uh, the prize funds as well are, are eclipsing traditional sports. Again, to go to, to Wimbledon, the final, the the, the uh, the person that wins the final gets about two and a half million dollars. The biggest competition for a game called Dota, the prize for that is, is over six million. Six and a half million dollars goes to one person. So the prize funds and the number of viewers are eclipsing traditional sports and this move just helps legitimise it and bring it to an even wider audience. Yeah, it is extraordinary to hear that tens of millions of people actually tune in to watch these competitions. At the same time though, it does still feel a long way away from your traditional sports, you know, the netball and the football that you played at school. Yeah, absolutely. I've, I've attended a number of these events and I have to admit it does take a while to sort of get into it. The crowds are amazing. They get really into the sport and watching their favourite teams. Uh, I've, I've sort of travelled around and did a feature on uh, some of these teams and travelling around they get idolised as much as traditional sports stars. But one of the things that sort of dogged the, the industry a little bit is because it's such a young industry and there's so many young people taking, taking part, one of the things, as it said in the, in the clip there, is that a number of high profile teams have, have openly admitted that they use Adderall, which is a, a drug that's used to treat uh, 
uh, ADHD in, in children traditionally, so that they can focus more on uh, on the game, focus better on the game, because that's uh, that's a very intense process when they're playing up there on stage. And uh, really, it's it's needed. It's a big organisation like the ESL, this is the organisation that set up the World Esports um, Association, uh, to get to come in there and say, well, we're going to do drug tests at our big events and make sure that this isn't happening. Also, there's been lots of accusations of cheating, so these guys uh, maybe hacking into the systems that they're using to, to cheat and, and, and win that way. So it's really needed this for a long time, and, and it will help the uh, it will help esports, as strange as it seems to a lot of people, reach a wider audience. And how much of a challenge will it be for this regulator to try and get a grip on drug taking and cheating? Well, it's difficult to, to, to really guess how many people are, are using drugs in uh, in the esports industry now. Some people, the, some of the big players, have said that it's uh, they openly use um, Adderall and other substances that they actively cheat. Um, and there's been a lot of people in, in Asia. Asia is the huge market for esports at the moment. In Korea, it's uh, it's actually pretty normal for you to go and hang out in a cafe and go and play games and watch esports. Um, but really, it's needed a body to come in and do random drug tests, um, but also look after the um, look after the health of players. There's been a lot of stories around of of players players slumping over and dying in these esports cafes that exist in Asia uh, just because they're playing so much to get to this level that people are competing at in the clip that you just saw they have to spend pretty much all their waking hours competing and playing and uh, and practicing it's a real investment of time and that's actually can be pretty bad for your health so it's another part of it is getting teams in there and doctors making sure that uh, the people that are competing are actually uh, fit and healthy but there's a problem here, isn't there? Because you can see where you know the new uh, regulator can get into the big competitions to test for drugs, to make sure people are healthy. But if people are playing in chat rooms or in their own bedrooms, for example, how, how can they help there? Well, they can't really. I mean, there's a lot of people that there's a lot of competitions out there where you compete online and you, you compete online to get to the qualifying stage. But all these big events, they happen, as you saw in that clip there, in, in larger uh, venues like the O2. Uh, and they happen at football stadiums, really big events. I went to one at the Copper Box at the Olympic Park. And once they reach that stage, then they're going to need to compete at the actual event. So while you may be able to still use use drugs or, or cheat in some ways to get to these competitions, you're ultimately going to be found out very quickly on the live stage if you're not up to scratch. So um, it's, it's a very difficult system to monitor remotely, but once you get to these big events, that's where they can do the random drug tests and that's where they can, do, they can make sure that you're not cheating and they can regulate it a bit better. OK, Guy Cocker, thank you for your introduction into the world of esports. In other news, Christine Lagarde, who's the head of the powerful finance...